Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Trinity United Church of Christ digital and online service for Sunday, August 8, 2021. My name is Pastor Nick. I'm the associate pastor here at Trinity in the beautiful town of Canton, Ohio. I extend a heartfelt welcome to everyone tuning in for this service. A few announcements this morning. The All Church Picnic is still scheduled for Sunday, August 15th, around 11.30 or after the service. We do hope you will join, us, join in for some fellowship and some great food. A reminder for Raise the Roof 5K Run Walk, sponsored by Trinity. The proceeds from this race will benefit the Habitat for Humanity East Central Ohio. For information to register, go to our Facebook page and click on Raise the Roof link. Right, let's uh, pray with me as we turn our hearts and minds to our community of worship. It is good to be together, God, in this place with these people at this time, together listening for your voice. In this time of worship, tell us about your kingdom of kindness so that we may seek it. Show us your justice, for we want to walk with you humbly, closely, and daily. We pray in Jesus' most holy, most loving, most merciful name. Amen. Join with me in our call to worship. I will praise God in every moment and through every situation. Let us live in God's way. Through my words and action, my life will pay tribute to him. Let us live in God's way. Whenever the poor and humble hear of his greatness, they will celebrate too. Live in God's way. Come and lift up God's name with me. Let's praise his name together. Let us live in God's way. Amen. And now our centering prayer. Dear God, we give this day to you. May our minds stay centered on the things of the Spirit. May we not be tempted to stray from love. As we begin our day, we are open to receive you. Please enter where you already abide. May our mind and heart be pure and true, and may we not deviate from the things of goodness. May we see the love and innocence of all mankind behind the mask we all wear and the illusions of the worldly plane. We surrender to you our doings this day. We ask only that we serve you and the healing of this world. May we bring your love and goodness to us and with us to give unto others wherever we go. Make us your people you would have us be. Direct our footsteps and show us what you would have us do Make the world a safer and more beautiful place. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Luke 19, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times that amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. We took our grandson to the rodeo when he was about six. He was completely fascinated with a bull riding event. 
When the time came for the writer to be released from the shoot, he looked us square in the face and with all the seriousness of a six-year-old said, Grandma, that does not look safe. We tried to reassure him that the safety precautions were all in play. He had the gear, he had the spotters, and he had put in the hours of practice for a professional. His concern was still apparent for the writer, however. That does not look safe. We heard a story this morning about a man who was so excited to see Jesus that he got up early. He ran because he knew that Jesus was going to pass by. He climbed a tree, went out on a limb, and waited. He waited in expectation. For what? We don't really know. But there was excitement in the air, and he wanted to be in on it. There was not even a thought about going out on that limb might not be safe. Who was this guy, Zacchaeus, anyway? Well, Israel was under Roman occupation. An unfair tax was being extracted by people like Zacchaeus who worked for the oppressor. Zacchaeus was no ordinary tax collector either. He was the chief tax collector and he was very wealthy. Tax collectors earned their living, living, living by adding an extra surcharge for themselves. Needless to say, he was not popular with his peers. He was very good at what he did. The whole system was corrupt and Zacchaeus was in on that. Yet here he was that day waiting to see Jesus. The man was more willing to see Jesus than he was doing his job that day. Now, I can imagine, based on his reputation, that people were not moving aside for this guy. They didn't like him. They didn't want him around. They purposefully pushed him aside. He was the community bad guy, someone who had taken great pride in taking their earnings. And there were two other issues for him that day. The crowds saying he wasn't worthy. And the story makes a point of saying Zacchaeus was short. The story is very explicit in telling us these two things about Zacchaeus. Why? I think it's to show how creative he was and thinking outside the box. When a challenge came up, he got creative. Verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Zacchaeus was a man of action. What prompted him to go out on a limb in the first place? We've all been to a concert, a parade, and we couldn't see over the person in front of us. You can't see, but you know you're missing something very big. And Zacchaeus is trying to see what's going on. He's caught up in the excitement of the crowd, pushing, shoving, straining, just to catch a glimpse of this man called Jesus. He knew what he wanted, and he went after it. Instead of going to work, he ran ahead because that's where he thought Jesus might pass by. He got to the road and there was a huge roadblock and what the roadblock was, was the crowd. The parade was coming and he couldn't see a thing. He looked up and he saw a tree that would give him a better view of this man who had re healed, restored, and changed people's lives. So he climbed, giving no mind to physical peril or what people thought. He went out on a limb to see. Verse 5, when Jesus reached that spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus was a man of self-discovery. There was no one like this guy. People labeled Zacchaeus because of what his job was his physical stature, and his character. Everyone was judging him based on his appearance, his reputation, and their personal encounters with him. This guy lived under constant stress. The Romans had a rep for executing those who were not meeting their expectations, and his community had shut him out. Yet we see that Jesus actually stopped his travels made eye contact, and called Zacchaeus by name. 
Jesus saw beyond the position and looked into the soul and took time to build that relationship by going to his house. Zacchaeus had been identified by his peers and someone despised, yet Jesus looked past those human identifiers and saw his heart. Jesus stopped, looked up, and said to Zacchaeus, Come down here. We're having a meal at your house today. The response from the crowd, Are you serious? This guy is hated throughout Jericho. Zacchaeus works for those who persecute us. He makes money off his labor. Are you serious, Jesus? But Jesus responds, Come down, let's share a meal. I'll bet that did not make people happy. Zacchaeus, the traitor, the money grabber, the outcast. There are a lot of people Jesus could have shared a meal with that day. He chose Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus went out on a limb to be seen. Verse 8. Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times that amount. Zacchaeus was a man of conviction. This one encounter with Jesus changed everything. This one encounter with Jesus and Zacchaeus was ready to give to the poor and restore that which he had collected unfairly. What we do know is that Zacchaeus was convicted and knew that things had changed for him. He went out on a limb and was restored. In verse 9, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Zacchaeus was a man of expectations. Did Zacchaeus get up that morning, expect his life to be different somehow? Did he have an expectation that Jesus might see him, acknowledge him? I think he hoped, really hoped, that as Jesus would pass by, that Jesus would wave or something. Or why would he push through a crowd and go out on that limb? In Psalm 5.3, it says, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wake up in expectation. Did Zacchaeus wake up that morning with those expectations in his heart? And when Jesus actually stopped, called him by name, and then wanted to dine with him, I can't imagine what went through his head. What am I going to have for dinner? Is my house clean? What are we going to talk about? And what's he going to think of me? But he went out on that limb to be included. What does Zacchaeus have to tell us in this story? That going out on a limb to experience Jesus calls us to move from our comfort zone, to become a people of action. It may not feel safe, not safe at all. Yet God is calling us to be challenged, trying new things. He gives us the gear. He gives us prayer. He gives us scripture. He gives us the courage and the strength. He gives us spotters, our family, our community, the ones who encourage us, lift us up, and build us up. And he gives us the spiritual practice, always working on new and the awesome you. God wants us to get that creative juice flowing, trying new things, achieving things that you may have thought were completely out of reach for you. Zacchaeus went out on a limb, not thinking about whether it's safe, and Zacchaeus went out on a limb feeling a bit foolish as people pointed to that crazy guy up in the tree. So what? So what? Sometimes we have to be uncomfortable to see more clearly. The crowds of our world can obstruct our view, inhibit our time with God, making us feel small. The crowds of our world can say things that hurt us or tear us down. But we are called to be a people of action and get creative. We go out on a limb to see God more clearly, even when we don't feel safe. Going out on a limb leads us to be inquisitive, a people of self-discovery. We're all super curious about what is going on around us. We check social media to see what's going on or what we're missing. 
We want to check out what's happening when we see a crowd of people. We're a curious bunch. Our nature is to wonder what all the fuss is about. Seeking purpose and reason among the information highway. If that's all we do in seeking our purpose, we may be missing out on something really big. Missing out on the opportunity as God walks by. He's always there for those who have their spiritual eyes open for him. And we are called to rise above the noise of this world. Those negative thoughts that tell us we will never be good enough. Those negative words spoken over us that those, and those we speak to ourselves that we are unworthy. We are not defined by others. We just can't let other people determine our purpose. In our workplace, in our relationship, in our families. When we try to please others, it just makes us tired. We don't answer to the crowd, we answer to Jesus. The one who created the authentic you. He knows exactly who you are and what you're capable of doing for his church. We go out a limb on that tree even when we don't feel safe. And Zacchaeus teaches us about taking risks, stepping out to explore life, a people of conviction. What does it mean that salvation has come to your house? We can't buy it. We can't earn it. It comes from the relationship uh, with God. And it can be scary up there on that limb. We have to trust that the limb will hold us. We have to make sure our footing is secure. We have to have the confidence that the tree is deeply rooted and will stand. Zacchaeus was a tax collector before meeting Jesus, and he stayed a tax collector after the encounter. But his purpose was different. He now uses his purpose to glorify God and his profession. Our destiny is different when we share a meal with Jesus. We may be listening to the voices in the crowd. We may feel sometimes that we're invisible. We go out on a limb to be us, even when we don't feel safe. I think one of the greatest things that Zacchaeus taught us is to, that God knows us by name. A people filled with expectations. Jesus knows your name. He knows who you are and what you can accomplish. Jesus knows the conviction of your heart. Zacchaeus did not need to get the Lord's attention, and neither do we. Zacchaeus serves to remind us of who does the choosing and who does the responding. Zacchaeus teaches us to learn to listen for the voice of God in our personal lives and respond without holding anything back. He also teaches us to look for Jesus along our own road of life, not in the crowd, not just this once, but every day and every moment. Zacchaeus climbed that tree in order to see God that day, not caring what others thought or what they were saying about a grown man climbing a tree. We go out on a tree on that limb to experience that trust even when we don't feel safe. I'm sure some of you know about trust falls or even experience them. It's supposed to be this big team building exercise where one person in the middle of, their, of the class closes their eyes and trusts that their teammates will catch them as they let themselves fall. This exercise is supposed to build camaraderie and rapport. I find that trust falls are embarrassing and at times humiliating completely reliant on someone else's perception of trust, and they really are not safe. This term, forced fun is no fun, comes to mind. Fortunately, our God does not work that way. God gives us the opportunity to trust in real world situations based on that relationship we have with him. The opportunities to experience his love and care as we get creative, explore self-discovery, illuminate our own self-conviction and expecting God to show up. 
trusting that we will always be safe in his hands. Trusting he will never expect us to do anything where he is not completely with us. Our challenge. It takes determination to climb up that sycamore tree. It takes true effort to grasp the next branch. It takes nerve to ignore the crowd. It takes courage to move out of our comfort zones. However, uncomfortable we feel or when we feel unsafe, going out on a limb will always give us a better glimpse of Jesus. Like Zacchaeus, you will find that going out on a limb, you will discover that amazing you inside, living in hope, excitement, and joy, and a complete zeal for life. Zacchaeus gave us the perfect example of one who struggled against a crowd of naysayers, his own self-esteem, his own self-worth, his own self-doubts. He went out on a limb in humility and heard Jesus call him by name and then wanted to have a meal and share his home. Like Zacchaeus, Jesus wants to visit your house today. He has no requirements. We don't need to make all things right with our dealings before letting him in. He already knows who we are and what shape our house is in. His presence alone and his love for us will lead us to do things we never thought we could do. We can easily assume that Zacchaeus lived a different, fuller life after this one encounter with Jesus. We may not always feel safe, but we take on that sycamore tree. We see God and we get to see ourselves as Jesus sees us. People of action, people of self-discovery, people of conviction, people of expectations. Not always playing it safe. So when that chute opens, we are geared up, stoked up, practiced up, lifted up, ready and willing to ride for the duration even when we don't feel completely safe going out on that limb, we can 100% expect God to be there and to put our trust in God's got me and God's got you. Amen. Our benediction today is loving God. We thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us your word, and encouraging us in our gathering together today. Take us and use us even when we may not feel completely safe. Give us the courage to go out on a limb to serve you and all people in the power of your spirit. In the name of your son and who loves us abundantly, who knows us by name and always desires to share an intimate meal with us. We go forth to serve in humility our families and communities. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.